welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is episode 374. If you are a new viewer, and we do have a good bit of new viewers, welcome and thank you for joining us on our little crafty journey here. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please click that little subscribe button down below and the bell-shaped icon next to it will give you notifications anytime I post a video, which is always on Saturdays and Wednesdays. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for sticking with me and coming back and watching the craziness every week. So let's get started because I have some little problems this week. So uh, we'll start with the first little problem. I have some finished objects, one of which is a little doll that is, I showed part of this last week so it wasn't finished. I finished it and it's awful, it's awful. Anyway, here we go. This is the little flower, okay? And then you actually crochet, there is wire crocheted through each of the petals. So I finished that and this is one ugly doll. I don't know what I did. I mean, I still do need to put a little bit of like rouge for her cheeks. But, I don't know, it just, it's a problem, yeah. So, I don't know if I can improve upon this, or if this is just a do not make again. So anyway, there it is. Let me know what you think. Um, yeah. Total fail, basically. <laughs> so anyway, there's, there's my first little crochet disaster. So... The next is a knitting disaster, but I'll show you that when we get to the works in progress. And it's not a disaster anymore, but it started out. I'll tell you that story when we get to it, because it's kind of funny and interesting. I can laugh about it now, but you'll see when I, when I get there. I made two hamsters. So there's my little hamsters. Oh, his ear's hiding there. So two little hamsters. And I have two cats. I don't know why I have such a hard time with their little faces, but I do. That is just not my strong point. This one's little face looks a little bit better. His whiskers are a little better. But here they are. This one's lower whisker. It's there. It just keeps hiding a little bit. But anyway, um, there's my little cats. To me, this one reminds me more of a chinchilla. <laughs> But I think if I tried to sell these at a craft fair as a chinchilla, nobody would have a clue what I was talking about. Yeah. Anyway, those are my finished objects. Now we'll get into my works in progress. The first one is my ongoing knitted sock blank that I am going to be dyeing with Sue Lothar. If I ever get the sock blank done, um, I did take it with me today to Wal or to uh, McDonald's. I was going to be sitting there for a while waiting for Dave, and so I thought, I'll just take this. It's mindless. I can just sit in it. I was so cold inside McDonald's that my fingers were cold and it hurt to knit. So I ended up sitting in the car where it was a little bit warmer and turning the heat on, which is crazy. But anyway, I was cold. But I do have a good bit finished and since last week I was just beginning into this last week so I've gone all the way through up here and I'm just kind of varying my stitches at this point between garter and stockinette so I've gotten some progress on that this is how much I have left and this yarn is bear yarn it's one of the um bear yarn is a brand that knit picks carries and it is 20% off this month so if you would like yarn that you can dye, it's bare yarn. Um, or if you just want yarn that's this color, you could do that too. Um, and they have it in different fiber contents. I forget what this one is called. The label says fingering weight, but the weight on the back of the ball band says it's a four. It's a fingering weight. Um, so anyway, that's that project. Then I will show you my sweater project. And I actually put a progress keeper on it so I could show you how much I did since last week. So that's where I was. And I am at the point of the sweater right now where I am doing the arm decreases. So there's like 24 arm decreases and you have to go all the way around. So 
I forget how many stitches are on this. It's it's several hundred going around at this at this time. So there it is. And the cuff of the sweater has this little detail and the bottom of the sweater also has that same flowery detail to it. Then I will come to um, the almost disaster. Last week I showed you the afghan I was making. It's it has been commissioned. Um, I, I made the same afghan for a lady 20 some years ago and it finally fell apart. She asked me if I could make it for her again. So this is um, Big Twist by Joann's. So that is the yarn that I'm using and it's the same color as what the afghan was that I made her 20 some years ago but I don't remember what yarn I used at that time. It was probably Red Heart or something like that. I really don't remember. Might have been Mainstays from Walmart. I don't know, but it was this color and it was acrylic. So that's what I'm using. Now, here's the funny thing. The book, I'll show you what the Afghan that I am making. This is, is a book that is still being sold by Leisure Arts. This is the pattern that I am making. Okay, so when I opened it up, here is what I thought was the pattern. So last week I showed you like 23, 24 rows that I had done in garter stitch as a border. And then I had started into the main part of the afghan. So about 27, 28 rows in and I kept thinking, where are the cables? Because this pattern has cables in it. Why am I not finding the cables? It is then that I realized, if you look at this, we go from page 37, and then I turned the pattern over, and um, this is page 40. Yes, I am missing a page that has the actual pattern on it. I was jumping from one blanket pattern to this part, which is the correct blanket pattern. So then I went upstairs and raided the craft cave, desperate to try to find this page. This pattern's been used quite a bit. I did find it, thankfully. But yeah, here it is. This is the actual beginning part that I needed was right here because I needed to know the stitch count and I needed to know the pattern setup, which was right here. The rest of the pattern was already here on the wrong page, well, on the other existing page, but I was jumping from this, from this blanket pattern to this blanket pattern and wondering why the rows weren't matching up, why the, the cables were missing. Yeah, a lot of wasted time. I can laugh about it now, but um, anyway, so I have gotten quite a ways on this, so let me show you. Here it is. I can't open it all the way up, it'll fall off the needles. The cable that is on this is a nine stitch cable. So you work on one part at one point and then you work on the other part. That's why it looks like a nice fat cable. So let me stretch it out as much as I can so you can see it, but there it is. And I am probably about two thirds through the first skein of yarn and I have six all together because I couldn't remember how many I needed for this. And I'd rather have too much than too little. I can always return the yarn I don't use. So um, yes, that was my almost disaster in knitting. Then my last project, as if I didn't have enough, I've got to stop doing this. I start with two projects and they keep morphing. And then I've got more on my plate to get done than I've really got time to get done. So last week I showed you the beginning part of the basket I'm making to match the afghans that I have for my kids. So this is the finished bottom of the afghan. And I started going up the sides here. So, and I am holding, I'm using clothes, clothesline, cotton clothesline, as you can see and 
two skeins of yarn that I'm being that I am holding together. If you want to see how I do this, um, I will click. You can click a link right here, and that will take you over to a tutorial I did on how to do these clothesline baskets. Um, I actually have several together. I have the first one that I did, and then I redid a tutorial later on that's a little bit more in depth. So um, that'll be a playlist that you can click on. It'll take you to all of them. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been working on this week. What have you been working on? Now I do have some acquisitions this week. Um, a while back, Tina showed me a coin purse she was working on. And it was really interesting and I thought that would be kind of fun to make for craft fairs, but not the coin purse part of it. But I thought, what about if I made it longer than a coin purse so that people could put their cell phone in it or they could put their sunglasses in it. So in order to do that, I needed to order some of these. And these are the little purse clasps. And they are made for crochet or knitting because you can see that they have these little holes all the way around them. So these are called a kiss clasp when they do that. And then I have another style. It's the same color. All of these are kind of like an antique brass. This one, I have, I think, three of these. The kiss clasp is actually two hearts. So it's a little fancier scroll work. So these will sell for a little bit more. Uh, they're the same size. But I have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have a total of eight to make for coin purses. Um, so anyway, Tina did send me the pattern to that. She messaged it to me, so I'm going to be fooling around with that when I finish some of these other projects. And in case you want to make one of these, the, the real one on the tutorial looked so much cuter than this. Um, but this was also a tutorial um, that Tina sent to me. And like I said, it's the, the tutorial is done in another language, I think Chinese, but I'm not sure which. They do have subtitles down below the video um, that kind of tell you what she's doing. But her her um, yarn is much tinier than mine and her hers looks adorable. Mine, not so much. Um, but yes, I got this from a YouTube tutorial. So, and if you're interested, let me know and I'll pass the link on to you. Um, yes, yeah, so that's my acquisitions. Now Wednesday's video is going to be a surprise to everybody because I have no clue what it's going to be yet. I've been thinking, but I, nothing's really struck me right now. So if you have some ideas what you would like Wednesday's video to be, please leave me a comment down below if you have some ideas. If you missed last Wednesday's video, I tested my china for lead to see if it was okay to use. And, and based on the testing, it all showed up positive, that everything was so positive it was okay to use, not positive as it got had led. But the funny thing is, and somebody asked me this, and it actually was a thought that crossed my mind, um, how trustworthy was the kit? Um, and so they said, maybe you should do a, a test against something that you know has lead in it and see if it shows up positive for lead. I thought that was an excellent idea. I apparently don't have anything in my house, thankfully, that has lead in it because I tested it against some of my great-grandmother's china. I have a teacup and saucer from my great-grandmother's Haviland china. I have no idea if the rest of the china is even in existence, but my mom had my great-grandmother's teacup and saucer. So I know that it's, a, it's over 100 years old. 
So I checked it, it showed up fine. And then I have my, the same great grandmother's uh, ceramic bean pot and little custard cups or bean cups that went to it. Um, and I tested that too. That was made with like an out of uh, Guernsey pottery, which was made in Ohio. Um, I tested it and it did not contain lead either. So I don't have anything older than that to test it against. Um, unless I take my testing kit over to my mom's house and, and do a little experimenting there. We do have a chocolate pot that was my great, yeah, my great grandmother's. And she got married in like 1909, so it's somewhere around there. So it's a little over 100 years old. So I might take it with my to my mom's this week, and, and we can we can test the chocolate set and see how see if that's okay. Um, so anyway, we'll find out. But I'm I'm going with everything safe at this point. It just sounds better that way. So that was last Wednesday's video. If you missed it, you can click the link here and find out that so far I. I think I'm safe with my dishes. <laughs> so now it's time for... Now in our Come and Get It section this week, Lion Brand is offering up to 30% off of their yarn. But if you buy within their select, it's under select yarns, you can also take an additional 20% off. So altogether you could potentially could get up to 50% off of the yarn that is within their select, which means it's it's um, specific colors and brands of Lion Brand. Uh, you do need to use a coupon code for that. It's APR Extra 20 to get that additional 20% off. The sale does end on the 15th at 9 a.m. And you can potentially get up to 50% off. So it's up to 30% off, then you can get an additional 20. So um, yes, there's potential for getting half off with that coupon code. So that is Lion Brand. Knit Picks, as I said before, they had their bear yarn this month on sale for 20% off, and that's any of the bear brand yarns. They also are running a site-wide 15% off sale until the 20th of April. Uh, you do need to use a coupon code with that when you complete your order of Knit More and you will get an additional 15% off site-wide. So that is Knit Picks. Lovecrafts has up to 35% off of their machine washable yarns. So I'm not sure exactly what that, if it's just acrylics or what they mean by that or if they, that it means if it includes superwash. I really don't know, but it is up to 35% off of machine washable yarns. And then lastly, Mary Maxim has 25% off of all of their Afghan kits. So that is Mary Maxim. Those are the sales that I know about. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. We are a little over a third of the way to our next 100 subscribers, which means we will be doing a giveaway when we hit the next 100. And if you haven't already, leave a comment down below to let me know an idea for Wednesday's video and we'll see who wins on that one <laughs> um, and what we will be doing. So that's it for this week. Thanks again for watching and we'll figure out Wednesday together. Bye everybody.